Welcome back. Um, I just want to do a couple of little bug fixes um, at uh, this stage. Um, if you remember from last time, we had uh, an issue with the player and the fading in and the fading out and the timings. Um, I've pretty much for the most part fixed that. I've set the timer just to five so we can see. So when the timer hits zero, he dies, he fades out, he comes back. If he falls off the edge, he dies, he fades out, he comes back. Now there's one small bug here that I'm going to fix with you guys. If he falls to his death and the timer hits zero, he spawns twice, which we don't want because that is not good. So this is how I think we're going to fix that. First of all, let me show you what I did in order to fix that previous issue. Um, if you remember, I had the functions fade in, call death, fade out, happen when the timer hits zero. I've changed that just to player death now. So I just want to call that one function. And what I've done is I've added those other functions into the player death function and taken out the time delays. So when the player dies, we're going to spawn the particles, we're going to destroy the player, we're going to wait half a second, then fade out. Then we're going to wait a second, we're going to send the player back to the beginning and spawn the particles, set the timer back to five and then fade back in again. So that all happens in a nice sequential order, which is great. The only issue is when he falls down and hits collision death, because he falls off the platform, drops a little bit, the timer still ticks down. If for some reason, and you know, it, it might not ever happen in the game, but it might, and it's a bug that you don't really want. If that happens at the same time, then the per, the call player death function gets called twice. So how do we fix that? Well, I'm going to set another global variable, and I'm going to make it a boolean. Now, a boolean is just a true or false statement, and I am just going to call this boolean in game. So if the player is in game, the boolean is going to be true. If the player is not in game, the, the, the player in game boolean is going to be false. So the way I'm going to use that is when we're in a menu screen, we're not in game, I'm going to set it to false. When we're in game, I'm going to set it to true. I'm going to base a bunch of conditions of whether or not that's true or false. And then when certain things happen, I'm going to just toggle that on, toggle that off, change it so that we know that certain things will happen when we're in game, certain things will happen when we're not in game, if that makes sense. So what I want to happen is every tick of the game, I want to subtract one from the timer, but I only want that to happen if we're in game. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to push C on the keyboard and that's going to add a condition. And I'm going to go to system and I'm going to check under global and local variables if the Boolean is set. I'm going to check in game and I'm going to see if uh, every one second, if we're in game, I want to subtract one from timer. Now, the in game by default when we start is set to false. So if I play it now, the timer is not going to tick down. That's just going to sit at five, which is great. That means that we have control over when we put the timer on and when we don't, which is going to help us a lot when we're moving around and, and, and doing things with the level. So every one second it ticks down if we're in game. Um, start the get when we start the game we're not in game so when we start the layout on start a layout we want to change that to true so we're going to go here we're going to go set uh, set boolean and we're going to set in game to true uh, we're going to fade in first and then we're going to set it to true so I only want to now be able to move if we're in game so under initialize we're going to set another event so we're going to go system we're going to Compare the boolean, we're going to say if in game, and then we're going to add an action, and we're going to go system. And we're going to go, in fact, if we just type it in, just type in group, set group active, and the group we want to set active and deactive is the player controls, and we're going to state, state them active, activated. So if we're in game, the player controls are going to be activated. If you click on this, push control C, control V just to paste it, and then select just this section here by clicking on it and push I. You can invert it. You can do that by right clicking as well and clicking invert. So now we're going to say if we're not in game, so if the boolean here is set to false, then we want to deactivate the player controls. So we're not going to be able to move now until we fade it in. So as soon as we fade it in, it's going to take about 0.5 seconds, then we're going to set to true player controls become activated 
and then away we go. And then obviously if we need to pause the game or if we need to disable the player controls, we can play around and disable these groups as well, which is great. So now when the timer reaches zero, let's go system, let's set boolean, let's go in-game to false. So it's going to stop. It's going to stop ticking down as soon as it hits zero. Then we're going to trigger once, we're going to call player death, we're going to die. Now when we restart, um, when we respawn the player, we want to set we want to set the boolean to be true again. So set boolean in game true right after we respawn. So if you look at the, the, the sequential hierarchy of what happens here, you've got spawn particles, death particles, destroy, wait, fade out, wait one second, spawn back in, spawn the particles, set in game to true, which will then activate the timer and then fade in. Um, so we can play the game, which takes 0.5 seconds. So now, if we look back, I just want to double check the code that I've got here. Uh, we're going to set that to false as soon as it goes to zero. So as soon as we collide with that, I want to do the same thing. I want to go system, or I'll just drag out a copy. Oh, where did I put that? Why is my mouse playing up? Put that down there put that before player death. So as soon as we collide with that, I want to stop the timer, so I don't want that to happen. So now hopefully when we play the game, we've got that timer stopping. Why is my mouse playing up? So now, let's just test it. Destroy, go back, come back, fall off, destroy, come back. Let's see if I can jump down when there's one second left. Hit zero. It doesn't ever get down because it stops the timer at 2 and it resets it and that has now fixed the issues that we had before. So that's a lot smoother now. So it may not seem like a huge amount but I think in game in terms of playability and player control it makes a big difference to you know, whether the player feels cheated or, or the kind of experience and it's these little tweaks that we can add in during the build that make it an ultimately more satisfying playthrough experience for the player. It just makes things a little bit more polished and a little bit more fine-tuned. I'm going to leave it there. We're going to build some more of the level. We're going to add some more features, some more mechanics in in the next episode, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.